Boys, this hamster wheel ain't got no brakes. What is it we do in the red pill? We swap notes. Now I'm sure people have heard all kinds of different stories about us, but I'm here to give you a glimpse inside the locker room. Here we're going to discuss the field reports that happened a few years back. Brand new guys were trying to learn the strategies that we talk about. We built a set of working strategies based on the experience of hundreds of thousands of men. Men swapping notes, iron sharpening iron. Welcome to the locker room. Side note guys, this guy's rambling a lot, so I'm going to skip a lot of the details that don't matter and get to them later on here when they do. We've been together for five years and married just under two. We have an 18 month old daughter. A year ago, I left my job at 10 years. It just so happened to coincide with when my wife was going to return from maternity leave, so we came to the decision that she would be the sole earner and I would be the stay-at-home dad, raise our daughter while also studying for a degree in a field I really want to work in. This is my first time admitting that leaving my job probably hit me a lot harder than I thought it did, and I'm probably dealing with a mild form of depression to this day, and I'm sure this is not a coincidence, but my hair started to fall out after I left. My wife came from a family with a lot of mental health battles and is probably a bit more damaged than she's willing to admit. So, when I brought up some of my concerns about myself, she didn't like the idea of a drugged up husband, and I've never really taken it further. In our relationship, I've probably always been the stronger of the two. My wife's had some bad confidence issues, and I think she always thought for some reason that she was a reacher and I had settled for her. I'm really nothing special. Recently, we've both been on a health weight transformation and she's done incredibly well compared to me. So I guess the roles have reversed somewhat and with her new body, I'm sure she has a newfound confidence and some more attention from the opposite sex. So I find myself in this position now. A few days ago, I'm not sure what set it off, but I started getting this weird feeling that something wasn't right. I spotted on her phone a notification and a message from a lad at her work saying something along the lines of, I bet you can't wait to see me. Nothing too overt, but it got my mind working. That day, she was stopping in at work on the way to see her friend for a catch-up, and I was at home with the baby. I went into full detective mode, checking the guy's Facebook to find out more, and I noticed he had liked a lot of recent pictures my wife had put onto Facebook, including a selfie she posted that day. The guy looks nothing like me, by the way. I'm six foot four, bearded, and looking at me, you would say rock music fan. He's 21, and... He's got a much shorter chav type to him. So last night, this knot in my chest got too unbearable and I waited for her to fall asleep and I went through her phone. Now I can say with 100% honesty that I never have, never done this before with her. I trust her completely and I had an ex who used to do this to me even though she had cheated on me, so I've never felt the urge to. I completely understand the psychology behind what she's doing. It's almost textbook. Wife who doesn't get as much sex and attention from home as she wants to is seduced by the first person who gives it to her. However, it still hurts. My wife has never tried to talk about these things with me. She's not really the confrontational type. And it seems like the easy way out is getting her fixed from this other guy. So this is where I need help. What do I do next? The way I see it, my options are confront her about everything, which we're both going to truly hate and see what comes out of it. We may talk and decide to work on these things together, or my worst fear is we talk and she says, I'm not what she wants anymore and our marriage ends. Quietly working on improving myself and hope that what's happening with this guy just fizzles out, or do literally nothing and hope she comes to her senses, but again, run the risk of things developing further. So please, what would you do in this situation? A couple terms before we get started. Hamster. The hamster is a vicious thing. Now. We normally use it to describe female antics, but in this case, guys seem to have a pretty bad one too. The hamster is our way of post hoc rationalizing the decisions we make. And you'll notice it, you can hear it all throughout this guy's thing. Every time he mentions something, he always has to preface it with a justification, or what I call earlier, uh, deering, or to defend, to excuse, to explain, or to rationalize. If you'll notice, a year ago I left my job at 10 years. He has to add in a lower management position as a status symbol. Um, he was about to be forced out to upper management wanting something different. So he actually didn't leave. They forced him out. But he's doing this in a way to soothe his ego. 
At the same time, he's talking about the stress of his life causing him to lose his hair. But then he mentions, well, I'm shaving it and that helps. And things feel kind of dull. Like everything comes with an excuse. The problem with the hamster is it's, it's a manifestation of your ego. It's not there to help you. It's there to make you feel good. And as much as it pains me to say this to all the soy millennial types out there, your feelings are wrong and you should feel bad for having them. Just ignore this stuff. He has a very clear situation here and a very clear set of things that's bothering him. And the problem is he's so worried about justifying it and rationalizing it in his head that he's completely ignoring any kind of realistic solutions that he can do and help himself. Frame is a very difficult concept. It's uh, initially it was described, I think it was out of the mystery method where they talked about how people perceive the interaction, like who's leading it. Since then, it's kind of expanded a bit. It also encompasses a healthy level of narcissism, the person who's setting the, the rules of engagement for any social interaction. Essentially, it's your mental point of origin. And in this case, this guy doesn't have a frame. And you can see that because everything he does is reactive to the wife. She does A, he does B in response. She does B, he does C in response. You get the idea. Even with his solutions he's trying to come up with, everything there is centered on the girl. If I confront her about it, I won't like this and she may do this and she may do that. He's actually tailoring what he does in his life based on what his imagined responses from his wife are, which is a horrible way of going about it. Say what you will about women. You can like them, you can hate them, you can be somewhere in the middle, doesn't even matter. The one thing they don't like is to be responsible for your emotional state, and I don't blame them. They kind of... Girls generally look up to guys, at least the guys that they're madly in love with or they want to have children with or build a family with. So when you start acting needy like this, when you start reacting to everything she does, you're putting her in charge. And that's the absolute worst thing you can do because secretly, somewhere up in that little limbic brain, girls resent that stuff and it manifests as a lack of sexual attraction and in this case, a lack of sexual attention. I want to give credit to this for Athel K, but I could be mistaken. In general, the captain and first officer model is one that married guys, especially ones that have taken the red pill or even relationship guys, they take as the framework for their relationship. In this case, you're the captain. Now, it means you're in charge, but more importantly, it means you're responsible. A captain doesn't do everything under his command. He has, you know, lower deckers to handle that part, the officer class to handle that. but He's responsible for everything that happens. And it's a pretty good mental shift that helps guys understand both the female aversion to taking on responsibility in that way because of the aforementioned fear of failure that I talked about in a previous video. I won't retread old ground here. Also, it stops playing the blame game and expecting the other person to do for you because that's a fool's errand. People are not extensions of your ego. So you can't be... I'm in a marriage, the rules say you have to do this, that, and the other thing, and then expect her to perform as if it's her duty, because that's just unrealistic expectations. And when they let you down, you're going to build up resentment. That resentment usually comes with additional lists of demands, and it's a feedback loop. It's essentially the male version of female nagging, and I hate to say it, it's not attractive when girls do it, it's definitely not attractive when guys do it. First thing I gotta say is this guy's three options here all suck. Confront her about everything. Confrontation doesn't work. If you take nothing else from this video, take this. Confrontation solves nothing. And in the off chance that a girl is doing something she shouldn't be doing in a marriage, all she's gonna do is deny, deny, gaslight, all manner of ways. He actually doesn't want her to be chasing some strange. So she's gonna lie to him and he's gonna engage in his own delusion. And then here's the problem. In the future, she's actually going to be, learn to be a lot more clever about it, a lot more hidden. Instead of having stuff on her phone, her phone will have a pass lock. She'll have an excuse as to why it's always out of batteries. Everything comes with better excuses. So if you really do have concerns that your spouse is cheating on you, you need to keep that close to your chest. Wait until you have something Whatever level of evidence you think you need to know without a shadow of a doubt that she's betraying your trust, 
go with that. Don't open your mouth until you've already decided on a course of action. At this point, communication is not your friend. His quietly working on himself and the self-improvement thing, I should almost do another video on this. I call this the, the two-year failures. It's the strangest thing and most guys, once they join the married side of Red Pill, they start working on their relationships. It's almost always at that 24 month mark that a guy will come in and admit that it was a giant covert contract. He hoped that by lifting, getting himself in better shape, dressing nicer, that his wife will automatically just jump his bones, love him and not do anything that he doesn't like. That's not the purpose of this stuff. Right now, if she's out on the prowl for Strange, and she may not be, but if she is, she's already checked out of the marriage and she already doesn't like him. She's either looking to have fun while he takes care of the kid, or she's looking for a replacement. The problem with doing this, hoping to win her back, is not only is it not going to work, but the way he communicates with her just manifests with that same aspiration. Hey mommy, look at me, I'm working out. Don't you find I'm ripped? Hey mommy, I cut my hair great. Don't you like this? Does that sound like the kind of thing that turns a girl on? Yeah, I didn't think so. Third one here is where he says, literally do nothing and hope she comes to her senses. And to that, I will just say, wish in one hand, take a crap in the other, see which one fills up first. Now, better advice for this guy is essentially dread game. And it's kind of, he should have been doing that early on. I have a video I'll post it in the end card here where a guy is very worried when he's no longer the main provider in the relationship financially that he has no way to establish dominance within his relationship. And when I say dominance, it's that captain first officer model I was talking about before where he feels comfortable enough to take responsibility for everything. This is going to be increasingly common as the years pass on. Girls are earning more money. Society is bending over backwards to make sure they have strong independent women salary. Then you start to understand the benefit of this. Financial provision is no longer the means which you establish dominance within your relationship. And so what else do men offer? A lot of girls are right. They don't need no man, but girls still want one. So at this point, you got to think, what other things do you do? In this case, being a father to the children, that's definitely something a girl likes. It may not be the most sexually enticing thing he can do, but it is important. At the same time, being that luxury good, that hot product, he's looking at this 21 year old Chav thinking, is she really going to do something stupid with this guy? But that right there, a glaring example of what girls want when their provision is taken care of. She's got a job. She's got money. She's got a kid. At this point, what she wants are trophies. So if he does want to actually keep this marriage together and you know, I can see why he would. They're only 18 months into the first kid. Um, he needs to be more chav and less Dr. Mom. So why this matters to you, and I cannot stress this enough, guys need to really adapt their mental models to the modern world. And the modern world is very easy. Physically, it's not demanding. Physically, it's not very dangerous. Cooperation is a very strong skill, and for the most part, everything is automated. So what this means is that women are primed to thrive in the modern economy. And that's fine. I'm more than happy for girls to have soul-crushing jobs at the office. Most guys only wanted it because it provided for their family anyway. But knowing that, that means you can't follow the old ways of doing things. I put food on the table is no longer a sexual strategy. In his case, being the fat, bald dude sitting at home with the kids who's got mild depression is probably not the best approach for him. He needs to be hitting that gym like a madman. He needs to look hot. He needs to have options. Say what you will about Mr. Mom types, and I can get it. A lot of guys have a pejorative attitude towards it, but single moms, single dads, married moms, married dads, there's a huge co-ed experience there that natural dread game can take approach. In this case, all these girls with husbands that are just like he is now, very sad that their man isn't doing it for him anymore, would love nothing more than validation from this guy. And wives tend to notice when other wives are shooting at their husbands, and they tend to start acting right. It's not so much a threat point. It's not saying, if you don't treat me well, I'm going to go to her. It's that same reason that when she feels that urge to go chase after this 21-year-old chav, but she can see it in her husband. 
And pre-selection is a powerful attractor for women. Nothing is more attractive than other women who want their man. Well, an alternative for this guy is to not be such a soy boy. I'm not gonna lie to you. He's six foot four. I mean, at that point, you really have no excuses. And nothing bothers me more than seeing a six foot three dude who's out of shape. It's like wasted talents. It's like a fat girl with implants. I mean, so on this one, stop BSing herself. Stop using the hamster. Yeah, if your work looks like it's gonna outsource you, that's fine. Move on, grab another job. If you don't wanna get another job, that's fine too, stay at home, raise the kids. But when he says this stuff like, we decided that I'm gonna stay home and raise the kids, I guarantee you there's not a we there. I guarantee you she led the charge and he agreed to it, which is absolutely silly. Especially when he goes in here and spends a whole paragraph talking about how damaged and broken and self-conscious she is. I mean, he talks about her as if she's this broken porcelain doll that he's nursing back to health. Well, if so, why are you letting her make the big decisions? If she has all these problems, you should be leading the way. And I find it very funny that the very things he accuses her of doing are the things that he has in himself in spades. It looks like she's doing very good coping with a bad childhood and leading the family. The problem is, girls hate that and so she's out looking for strange. So let's say he decides he still wants to be Mr. Mom. Great. Let's say he's deciding to be the hot guy who's deciding to be Mr. Mom. Extra great. Let's say he's that guy who's trying to be hot still in that alpha, you know, sexual desire-ish way. He's decided to be Mr. Mom and he doesn't put up with any nonsense, has strong boundaries. Great. Those are the kind of things that help manage these kind of relationships moving forward into the future. Realize that girls are attracted to not only status, but pre-selection. Right now, she considers that corporate world a status marker. So if you're going to shun that, then you need to come up with other things. It's not hard for guys to have other things too that comes with status. There's broke guys in bands. There's guys starting side businesses. Heck, he could start a podcast. Get 5,000 Twitter followers and notice how all of a sudden you have an immediate status boost. There's an infinite amount of ways to show status without having to do it through your job. I will add to this though, one little thing that a lot of guys don't pay attention to. Your instincts are kind of honed for this type of thing. When you start getting that spidey sense that your girl may be pulling some nonsense on you, Chances are you might be right. If you're having that spidey sense tingle, you do it once. Do it once and you know, if I don't see this, then nothing's happening and you gotta stop. You get that out of your system. Yes, it's unattractive. Yes, it's hugely unattractive. But once you're done with that, you can finally move on. And you'll learn for the most part, and this is kind of the funny thing, a lot of guys find out their girl's not cheating, but when she's talking with her friends and colleagues, she speaks about him honestly in the way that she never would at home. And to a lot of guys, that's that major red pilling when they find out their wife does not respect him. On that note, I'll end it here.